Do you enjoy editing your photography in Lightroom, but are frustrated when trying to edit your infrared images in Lightroom? I can certainly relate to that. I'd like to share the profiles that I use to edit infrared images entirely within Lightroom. At the end of this video, I'll show you how you can order these profiles, or if you prefer, create them yourself. Before shooting infrared, I'd used Lightroom for several years. I appreciate its ability to quickly preview, rate, organize, and edit large numbers of images. While I've used Photoshop for its specific tools on some images, the vast majority of my images are edited only in Lightroom. This just wasn't possible with infrared. There are two big challenges in editing infrared images in Lightroom. The first is white balance. This was already a solved problem. By using a color temperature shifted custom profile, a good white balance could be set. Since each camera model requires its own profiles, most photographers created their own profiles for their camera. With your help and the raw files you've provided, we've created custom profiles for over 125 camera models free to download in the infrared profile pack. The second challenge in editing infrared images in Lightroom is color swapping. A common false color technique in color infrared photography is to swap the reds and the blues, resulting in blue skies and colorful foliage. Unfortunately, the channel mixer and other tools used to swap colors are not available in Lightroom. For a Lightroom workflow, you'd white balance the image in Lightroom, then edit in Photoshop to swap colors, save the image as a PSD or TIFF file, and return to Lightroom to complete your edit. This workflow makes it harder to preview your colors in Lightroom, harder to know which are your best images, requires more editing time, and doubles your storage requirements with extra files. I was very frustrated by this workflow and determined to find a better way. That's why I created the Lightroom Infrared Color Swap Profiles. After trying a dozen other raw image editors, chasing a variety of leads that turned into dead ends, I finally found the path. I created a set of actions to streamline the workflow within Photoshop. This led to creating a set of LUTs, which can be used to color swap infrared video and images in a variety of editors. Finally, I discovered Enhanced Profiles. Enhanced Profiles are a recent addition to Adobe products, designed to streamline the ever-growing need for profiles with every new camera model released. With Enhanced Profiles, I developed a technique for embedding the results of my Photoshop actions into a profile that could be used directly in Lightroom, bringing the color swap to Lightroom. I first shared this technique in 2020, and I've been refining it ever since. You can order the Lightroom Infrared Color Swap profiles, or you can create your own. These profiles are supported by any modern version of Lightroom, including New Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, and Lightroom Mobile for both your tablet and phone. Let's take a look at the profiles in each flavor of Lightroom. Let's start with a look at Lightroom Classic, and we'll look at the color swap demos here. So the first thing that I wanna do is set a profile. So I will go to the profile here and hit the drop down. The profiles use the same color temperature settings as the infrared temp 50 and negative 100 from the infrared profile pack. So I can pick one of those as a starting point. Then I can use my white balance eyedropper to pick a white balance. I'll use the clouds here to get a white balance. Okay, so now I have the tree is blue, the sky is kind of a gold tone. That's exactly what I want. So now within Lightroom, I can go to the profile browser, which is here, this icon on the right, and click that. And I'm going to go down to this group called the IR Color Swap in this group, there's a number of profiles that we'll go through. There's sort of three sets of six. So there's a set for JPEG, there's a set for negative uh, 50, and there is a set for negative 100. And what you'll notice is that because I white balanced this image with the negative 100 profile, these are already giving me a preview of what this image will look like color swapped with the different methods. So this is the hue method, shifting the hue 180 degrees, that's the result. This is the invert method. This is the red and blue swap. This is the result you'll get. This is the red and blue swap if we were to take the green channel and put it all the way to the blue channel. This is the red and blue swap if we take the green channel and put it all, all the way to the red channel. 
and then this is the green and blue swap. If we split the green channel 50% blue and 50% red, this is the result. So we have each of these to pick from, and I can see a color accurate preview right here in Lightroom to see what my color swap is going to look like. So in this case, I'll select this one and it looks good. And then I can close this and then I can just continue my edit in, in Lightroom as I would prefer. Let's move on to another type of image. This next image is a 550 nanometer image. We have the same process. You could, you could start with the profiles as well. So if I come down here and start with one of these negative 100 profiles, and I could close this and then set a white balance here on the tower. And now I have a white balance. So you can set it either with these profiles or with the color swap profiles. Now that I've done that, you can see that I will have a good preview of each of these images. So what, what, what are the different styles, the different color swapping styles look like? What will the effect and the result be? So you can take a peek at these and choose whichever one you like. One of the things that's nice about this is that once I've selected a style, I could apply it to all of the images that were done within the same shoot. So let's say that I, I like this uh, G-split style for this image and I want to apply it to a number of other images that were taken in the same shoot. So I can come down here uh, to the toolbar and I'm going to select all the images that were part of that shoot and then I can hit sync. And the two things that you want to make sure you have checked for the sync are treatment and profile because we want to pull that profile that we've selected and white balance because the white balance should be pretty similar because they were all shot uh, same day, same filter, same conditions. And if I hit synchronize, then that style will apply to all these. If I go to the grid view, then I can see that now all of these images are now color swapped and I get a full preview of them. So this is really great if I've done a big shoot and I want to be able to preview and rate my images before I've invested too much time in editing them. Now I can do that because I can get a preview of what they'll all look like color swapped. Okay, let's move on to another image. This is a 720 nanometer image. So we also have the flexibility to modify these as well. If I select a, let's say I select a infrared negative 100, which I might do commonly for say a 590 nanometer image if i try to white balance this you'll see that i'm not getting a good white balance the the, the value is pegged at 50,000. i'm not quite getting a full white on these neutral tones that i want so what i can do is i can switch to the other profile negative 50 and then white balance again now i'm getting a much cleaner white look and now when i open up the profile browser and go down to my infrared color swap profiles you'll notice that the negative 50 options are all giving me an accurate preview so for example if i just do a let's look at this one now i can start to get those these are very subtle colors of course because it's a 720 but i can get a color swap with 720 as well let's take a look at another example this is an image that was shot with a 590 nanometer filter, but it was overcast in the trees, not a lot of direct light coming through. But from my sensor, I tend to see that the color balance of a 590 nanometer image shot in the shade or under very dark conditions can actually be similar to a 720 nanometer image in terms of white balance. So because of that, I'll lean on these negative 50 profiles and I can select one of these and then I'll hit close. I can double check my white balance and yep, I have a good white balance. These two profiles are flexible enough to give you a variety of filters from 550 nanometers to 720 nanometers. Finally, let's take a look at an example shot with JPEG. So this is a shot with the Kalari Pocket. I don't think I did a very good white balance uh, in the field here. Well, we'll see what we can do with this image. So what I'm going to do is we'll just start and I'll just try to grab a white balance. Oh, I can get a little bit of separation there. Again, because we're in a JPEG image in this color profile, I don't get a Kelvin range. I just get a negative 100 to positive 100 here, and I've kind of capped out. So yeah, I didn't have a great color balance, but let's see what we can do anyway. So I will open up the browser and I will look down to the six JPEG options and you'll see that none of the other options are appearing because the, these are camera matching. So it's only going to show 
profiles that match your camera. And in this case, those other profiles that I had don't match this JPEG image, but the six JPEG versions do. And here we go. So I could pick one of these. I'll take a look at this one. This one looks pretty good. And so now I can use this to color swap my 720 nanometer image here, even if it was shot in a JPEG. Ideally, you'll want to make sure you have a good white balance set in camera when you're shooting JPEG. But if you do that, you can still use these color swap profiles in Lightroom. All right, let's take a look at the IR color swap profiles in the new Lightroom, formerly Lightroom CC. I have the same images loaded up, but I've reset them all to their import state. So we'll take a look at an image, open it up. I'll go to the edit tab. At the top of the edit tab, there is a the profile section. I'll go into the profile browser, close down Adobe Raw, open up the IR color swap group and then I will scroll down to my negative 100 profiles. Since this was a 550 nanometer image, I think that that negative 100 profile is going to work the best. Now that I have that selected, I'll go under color and I can use my eyedropper to set a white balance. So I can keep this white balance or I can play around with the white balance to find just the exact level that looks good for me. All right, so now that I've got that set, I can go back into the profile browser and I can compare all of the different profiles for negative 100. So see what this looks like. Take a look at each one of these individually. See what colors I like. What's my mood for this particular image. I'm going to select this one. So that will be my color. And now I've got that set. So I could continue to make edits to this image. So for example, I could hit auto. I could make other adjustments. Now that I've made this adjustment, I can copy this to other images. So if I select this three dot menu on the right, I can select copy edit settings. You can also hit control or command C, just like you would to copy and paste. I can select another image and then I can hit the three dot menu and select paste settings. I can also go to another image and hit control or command V to paste these settings as well. If I go back to the grid, then I can select multiple images holding the control key as I select each one. And then if I hit control V or command V on the Mac, then it'll apply those that profile and white balance to all of these images. So here I am in Lightroom on the iPad and the interface is a little bit different, but you're going to see the same pattern happen here. So I will select an image to work with. Once I have this image, I want to update the profile. So the first thing I'll do is come under profiles and I'm going to go to my negative 100 profiles and I will pick one of those. This will allow me to set a good white balance so I can hit color, use my eyedrop uh, white balance picker. I'm going to go on the concrete here and we'll say, okay. Now, if I go back into the browser and go down to these negative 100 profiles, I'll get a good color accurate preview of what these will all look like when applied to my image. So I can see which one I like and then apply it to my image. Now, if I go back, then I can continue to make other edits. If I swipe to the next image and on the right hand side, hit this icon for the apply from previous photo and then just hit adjustments. Well, then it's quickly applied that to the next image as well. So again, easy to apply the, the white balance and the profile across multiple images. Let's go back to my grid view. From here, I have the ability to apply the settings to even more images. If I select the three dots in the upper right hand corner and the select option, then I will pick my image down at the bottom of the screen. There's an option that says copy. So I will select that and it's copied the settings to the clipboard. Now I'm still in select mode. So now I can select all of the other images from the same shoot and that I want, that I know will have a similar white balance and I want to apply the similar profile to, and then I can hit paste down at the bottom of the screen, paste settings to 10 photos, hit apply. And there we go. So now I very quickly have a preview of what these images will look like color swapped all done before I've invested too much time into even deciding which are my best photos and which ones I really want to focus on editing. So here I am now in Lightroom Mobile on a phone. A lot of the, the tools are the same as we had on the tablet and even the new Lightroom, but the interface is going to be different. So let's select an image. 
And the first thing I want to do is select a profile. So I'll scroll to the right and select profiles. There's a little down arrow next to it. If I click on that, I could use that to select from the different groups of profiles. I'm already in IR color swap, but if you don't start there, you can then select that from whichever profile you're in, select that. Now I see the, the IR color swap profiles. I'm going to scroll over to the right to get to the negative 100 options. I'll pick one of those. Any of those is fine because I just want to set a white balance at this point. So now I will scroll back to color and I will get my eyedropper and I'm going to put that over the concrete on the ground. That's a nice neutral subject to pick from. And now I can go back to my profiles and now I will get a color accurate preview for all of the negative 100 color profiles. So this is the green to red, green to blue, RB swap alone, invert, the hue shift, and splitting the green channel. So any of those, I can see a preview, a color accurate preview of what those look like. I'm going to select the green to blue. That looks a little bit more fun. We'll try that for this demonstration and I'll hit the checkbox. So now I've got that uh, set up in my image. If I scroll to the next image, down at the bottom of the screen, there's the previous option. If I hit previous and then adjustments, then it will apply the same settings, the same white balance and the same profile as we're in the previous image up here and now here. So that's one way to copy those settings from image to image very quickly. If I go back to the grid view, again, I can select the three dot menu at the top and then hit select. Once I've got that, I can select an image that I've already updated and hit copy. And that'll copy those settings to the clipboard. Now still in select mode, I can select all of the other images that I want to apply that to. Same shoot, same settings, and then hit paste. Paste settings to 10 photos, apply, and now it will apply those. So this is a great way to bring mobile into your workflow and be able to do infrared in mobile because you have the ability to use these profiles and swap your colors directly in your mobile device without even needing to use Photoshop. The Lightroom infrared color swap profiles are created specifically for raw images from your model of camera and for JPEG images. They include 18 different profiles to make editing your color infrared images fast and enjoyable. With these profiles, you don't need Photoshop to create color accurate previews or to process your color infrared images. Of course, you'll still be able to use Photoshop if you choose. You can order these profiles or get more details from my website. The link is in the description. Since these profiles are manually created for each camera model, give me a day or two to create your profiles and email them directly to you. You can also create these profiles yourself. You can use the infrared profile pack, my Photoshop actions, and my LUTs to get a head start. The links are in the description. If you don't have Photoshop or find the process too daunting, you can order these profiles. In either case, I always appreciate your support and feedback. Thanks.